Steve Lambert, and I am an artist from originally from California, and I live in New York now. And um, a lot of the work that I do has to do with creating temporary uh, utopias. So trying to sort of ground it in the world that we live in, but changing a few things and making it uh, sort of like an ideal uh, that's not meant to last, but um, to give people a vision of the way that the world could be. So there's a couple projects that I've done like this. The one that um, has brought me to Linz is the New York Times Special Edition, which I worked on with a large group of people that was a, a copy or a fake of the New York Times, which is the largest newspaper in the US, that announced the end of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, that Guantanamo was gonna be closed, uh, that there was gonna be a new high-speed rail system running through the country, which we don't have. Um, and basically 14 pages of best case scenario news, all based on um, in, in real life and, and, and what was possible uh, and dated nine months in the future. So we printed up 80,000 of these and handed them out around New York and a few other cities in the US. And our goal wasn't really to trick anyone, it was to uh, just give them the feeling of what it would be like to live in this world for about 15 seconds. And then after 15 seconds, there were enough clues, like the, it being dated ahead, and um, that we were handing out a New York Times for free, which never happens. <laughs> As an artist, you know, I'll kind of use whatever media is best and um, started out in film and video and music and then moved to printmaking and drawing and doing projects online and uh, one of the well uh, yeah there's another project I did it's a Firefox extension called ad art that replaces all the ads on the internet with art so if you went to yeah <laughs> great <laughs> right, yeah so if you go to a uh, you know your local newspaper or, you know weather site or something instead of seeing ads you see these rotating art exhi exhibitions um, so I was doing projects like that, and um, a few years ago, I actually made a video game called Simmer Down Sprinter. And um, I also have a background in carpentry, and so built, it's like an 80s style arcade, two cabinets, you sit in it, there's an armrest, you rest your hand on this uh, panel, and it measures your stress level. It uses like basic lie detector, kind of really simple analog technology, running through, um, uh, a USB kind of converter into a, a tower in the back of the machine. And it measures your stress level at the beginning of the race and you're competing against the person next to you. So as soon as you put in the quarter, it starts measuring. And um, it does take quarters because you know people get serious when they're paying. Um, and so uh, the, it's a running race and in the, in the race is me dressed in this ridiculous running outfit. One's all red, the other one's blue and I'm racing against myself. And the more relaxed you are, the faster your character runs. And if you get stressed out, your character will slow down. If you get too stressed out, it'll actually go backwards. So um, you're trying to out-relax your opponent. The, the idea is that it's subtly sort of teaching you uh, not, to, not to care. <laughs> Not to care about winning. <laughs> so I play, I don't have a console for it, but a friend of mine has Grand Theft Auto. And we have never actually played the game, you know? Like we just go and destroy things and, you know, drive around, whatever, and you just goof off. And, um, and so, the meaning of death in that game. At first, I was just horrified. You know, <laughs> like you're watching it, and my friends like blowing up an ambulance and shooting cops, and then get, and then like taking this um, bazooka and blasting it into the ground, launching himself 30 feet in the air. You know, <laughs> just his face when he was playing at this like slight crazed amusement. You know, <laughs> it's like this is awful. And then I did it, and I'm like, this is so fun. And, and, you know, and like the death is meaningless, right? And it's sort of, it's got to be affecting you somehow. It's not, it's not totally meaningless. But um, 
we can't do that in real life, you know? And like maybe I think there's a way that those outlets can be healthy and there's a way they could not be healthy too. And, um, but, but so, so to me, you know, that those things exist, right? So I'm not making them. I don't have control over whether or not they're made. That's not what I want either. But um, so people want these outlets, right? And they enjoy it. I enjoy it. So how can, how can I use that? How can I use those desires or those, those uh, the sort of that human nature, you know, of like wanting to compete, wanting to destroy, wanting to build, you know, that's why Sim, The Sims is so pos uh, popular. There's these kinds of things that we, we want to do and how can you direct them in a way that's interesting, that makes it a, not like a, oh, you know, like this, like educational game, but it's a, a game that's fun that also is, has, has values that are being imbued. And there's people that are working on that, and I, and I think they're doing a great, you know, a lot of them are doing a really great job. Thank you very much. Yeah.